On the news, Nigeria considers Madagascar have a remedy to treat COVID-19 infections, joins over 100 countries for WHO drug trials. President Buhari appoints Agbola Gambari as new chief of staff. And Isabel dos Santos accused Angola government of fabricating evidence against her. A warm welcome to News Now. I am Fidelia Agoncha. As part of efforts to address the COVID-19 pandemic, the Nigerian government says it will consider the Madagascar herbal remedy COVID organics. Chairman of the Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19, Boss Mustafa, at a briefing on Monday said the government is making arrangements to pick up a consignment of COVID organics to the country. Once obtained, the National Institute of Pharmaceutical Research and Development and the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAVDEC, will subject the drug to clinical, uh, clinical analysis to ascertain its efficacy. COVID Organic was developed by the Malagasy Institute of Applied Research, IMRA. Its main ingredient is said to be sweet wormwood, a plant of Asian origin where the anti-malarial drug at a machine originated. Of the 186 COVID-19 cases so far recorded in Madagascar, 101 have recovered while none has died. Nigeria has joined more than 100 other countries to take part in the World Health Organization Solidarity Trial Treatment for COVID-19. The trial aims to rapidly discover whether any of the drugs so far proposed by countries slows COVID-19 progression or improves survival. Nigeria's Minister of Health, Osagi Ehanire, who announced this, says a trial will be conducted in five states and the FCT. The state includes Lagos, Ogun, Kaduna, Sokoto, and Kanu. About 1,200 patients have been randomized from the first five countries to evaluate the safety and efficiency of the drug combinations. Nigeria, as at Monday midnight, had 4,641 confirmed COVID-19 cases, of which 902 have recovered and 152 fatalities recorded. Private laboratories in Nigeria can now conduct COVID-19 tests with the support of the Nigeria Center for Disease Control and CDC. Director General of the Center, Chikwe Ihekwazu, announced this on Monday during the Presidential Tax Force briefing in Abuja. Ihekwazu said guidelines will be issued to the private labs on the best way to conduct the test. Nigeria has so far uh, carried out tests on 28,418 samples for COVID-19 and is helping to scale, hoping to scale its testing capacity to flatten the curve of the pandemic. And still on efforts to contain the COVID-19 pandemic, Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Mohamed Bellu, has inaugurated a 506-bed space isolation center in the nation's capital. The four-story building, which is a private sector intervention coordinated by the Ministerial Expert Advisory Committee on COVID-19, is equipped with ventilators and other world-class equipment. Tunjoye has details in this report. This is the biggest isolation and treatment center for COVID-19 in the FCT. This facility is a four-story building that is well equipped with the following features. 506 bed spaces, ventilators, air conditioning system, showers and toilet, 24-hour power supply, mobile x-ray and ultrasound, ambulances which is available 24-7, 24-hour security, refrigerators, TV and cable, incinerator, catering services and a closed circuit television. This is a purely private sector led intervention which has culminated in this facility that has given us an isolation and treatment center that can boast of 500 beds plus. So we thank all the donors, as was earlier indicated by the chairman of the committee, as well as all members of the committee 
mentioned as well as those not mentioned who have been co-opted, who have worked tirelessly over the last few weeks to present to us what we have here. I want to also use this opportunity to mention to the wider public that in addition to this facility you are seeing here, the committee has also intervened by providing a 350 kVA generator to the University of Abuja Teaching Hospital Isolation Center. In addition to that, the committee has also provided a 350 kVA generator together with other ancillary equipment to another FCTA isolation center located at the Karu General Hospital. I wish to seize this opportunity to say that COVID-19 is real. We are calling on the residents of the FCT and indeed all Nigerians to be committed to fighting this dangerous and debilitating disease. I also wish to express my profound appreciation to all members of our committee and staff of the FCTA for the extraordinary zeal, diligence and commitment displayed in carrying out this important assignment. With these worker facilities in this place, you may call this a home away from home. And government is definitely making a strong statement in the fight against coronavirus. From Iju in Abuja, Sunji Oye. TV News. Well, Kano State government has extended a total lockdown imposed to curtail for the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic by another one week. President Muhammad Buhari had on April 27th ordered an immediate lockdown in the state amid surging COVID-19 cases. The State Commissioner for Information, Muhammad Garba, who disclosed this early Tuesday morning, said uh, the state government took the decision after due consultation with federal government and key stakeholders in the health sector. Kanu has the second highest COVID-19 cases in Nigeria, with 666 confirmed patients and 32 fatalities. Meanwhile, 50 people have so far recovered from the illness in the state. Well, Lagos has always been described as the city that never goes to sleep, but that reputation is now history, with residents grappling with many other impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. After more than a month of inactivity, workers and business owners in Lagos have been trying to make up for lost time, and with everyone on the road, traffic congestion cannot be left out. Speaking to TV360 Nigeria, Lagosians say the 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. curfew has worsened the traffic situation and is badly affecting productivity and efficiency at work. The whole thing is affecting because before people could get to their work, there's little limited time for them to work. And going back again means that everybody is tired of staying indoor because of hunger and because of a lot of family responsibility. People now trooping, trying to manage that one day on, one day off. Before you know it, everybody will be on the road. Even when you cross by, by three, you get into your place, can even, some will get to home, by, get their home by 10 or by 11. So I'm looking at that uh, uh, coffee as that they should supposed to uh, review it and make it probably between uh, 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. Taking cognizance of Lagos being a populated area where people go to work to different places. Now, coming back to my profession, it has affected our business because the, that little uh, uh, 8 to uh, 3 uh, p.m., yes, we thank God that we even have opportunity, but before going back to your home, before getting back to, your, to where you are living, you will see meet security agencies. So the whole thing is being choked up. The lockdown is, is gradual anyway. And, uh, you know, over the months or weeks, a lot of people have been tied to the house with a lot of issues up and down. And uh, since the lockdown was eased, we hear a lot of people have come out, you know, kind of taking free air, going about their normal business. And like as you can imagine, going Lagos for what it is, any slightest uh, opportunity can be used. So traffic situations has returned gradually, and some areas it's still eased. But it's, in, it's a normal Lagos life. The business is not uh, it's not like before, and then 
Now we are having a lot of issue concerning our business for now because the economy is affected and a lot of companies cannot even afford to even pay their, their workers. And personally, it affects me a lot. The closure of learning inst uh, institutions across the country to contain the COVID-19 pandemic has created a new wave of online education experience for both teachers and students. Founder of iRead Mobile Library, Fumi Lori, has created a virtual innovative school to help students stay busy while school remains shut. In a chat with TV360 Nigeria, Ilori says this initiative will further help use technology to boost education in the country. Currently have 1,300 children learning. So we put everybody on a WhatsApp platform, school one, school two, school three. Once a school fills up, we open another school. So the school is opened from 10 o'clock till 12 o'clock. We have a schedule where we've already sent messages to parents saying we're going to be having English and science today, we're going to be having art and creative writing tomorrow and things like that. So they're already prepared. We have curriculum we're running and every child we segment the, the lessons into nursery primary, mid-primary, and senior primary. So most of the teachers' interaction with the children has been pre-recorded in audio, whether we're using audio or video. So we post that on the platform and the children can listen to it. When we need feedback from the children, depending on if they're using worksheets, they can snap the worksheets and send back to the coordinators. For some other uh, lessons, we ask them to record. So they do their own audio recording and also forward to us. The World Health Organization has released additional guidelines to help countries and decision makers consider how and when to ease lockdowns and reopen schools as well as non-essential businesses. Admitting that the lockdowns imposed by many countries across the world has helped reduce the spread of COVID-19, Chairman of the Health Body Tedros Ghebreyesus said the negative impact on economies and the poor cannot be overlooked. The good news is that there has been a great deal of success in slowing the virus and ultimately saving lives. However, such strong measures have come at a cost and we recognize the serious socio-economic impact of the lockdowns, which have had a detrimental effect on many people's lives. Therefore, to protect lives and livelihoods, a slow, steady lifting of lockdowns is key to both stimulating economies while also keeping a vigilant eye on the virus so that control measures can be quickly implemented if an upswing in cases is identified. Over the weekend, further guidance was published that outlines the three key questions countries should ask prior to lifting of lockdowns. First, is the epidemic under control? Second, is the healthcare system able to cope with a resurgence of cases that may arise after relaxing certain measures? Third, is the public health surveillance system able to detect and manage the cases and their contacts and identify a resurgence of cases? These three questions can help determine whether lockdown can be relaxed slowly or not. WHO is working closely with governments to ensure that key public health measures remain in place to deal with the challenge of lifting lockdowns. Until there is a vaccine, the comprehensive package of measures is our most effective set of tools to tackle the virus. No professional sports, even behind closed doors, will be staged in England 
until June 1st, 2020, the UK government announced on Tuesday. The government has published a 50-page guidance document detailing how England will begin to ease lockdown measures. The document states that cultural and sporting events will only take place behind closed doors for broadcast. Premier League clubs met on Monday to continue discussions on project restarts. Now, the top flight has been suspended since March the 13th because of the coronavirus pandemic, but is aiming to resume in June with 92 fixtures left to play. We'll take a break here and bring you more stories. Don't go away. Welcome back. Now, the presidency has announced Agbola Gambari as the new chief of staff to President Muhammad Buhari. Gambari was the first Under Secretary General and Special Advisor to the Secretary General on Africa between 1999 to 2005. At a global level, Gambari was Under Secretary General and head of the United Nations Department of Political Affairs from 2005 to 2007. The Nigerian scholar, diplomat and an indigenous of Kwara State was appointed to replace the late Abakiari on Tuesday. Abakiari was chief of staff to President Muhammad Buhari before his demise, which was announced on April 17th after testing positive to the coronavirus. President Muhammad Buhari has asked the Senate to confirm 42 nominees as career ambassador designates. Buhari's request was contained in a letter dated May 6th and read by Senate President Ahmed Lawan on the floor of the upper chamber on Tuesday. The president based his request on section 171 of the constitution and attached the CVs of the nominees to the letter. The president also sent the names of the two nominees uh, to fill existing vacancies as non-executive directors of the Nigeria Deposit Insurance Corporation. They are Diana Okunta from the South South and Yinka Kali to represent the Northeast. And to security matters, gunmen have killed 15 people at Gonarogo village in Kajuru local government area of Kaduna state. Five persons were injured during the attack, which occurred on Monday night. Kajuru local government chairman Kafro Kaino told newsmen that the gunmen stormed the village late at night and started shooting sporadically at their houses. Kaino added that the assailants shot 15 of the villagers to death while five others sustained various injuries. The disease will be given a mass burial later today. While well, the Katina State Police Command have rescued two women who were abducted by suspected bandits in Kofi local government area of Katina State. Gambo Isa, police public relations officer in Katina, confirmed this in a statement on Monday. He explained that the women, Haruna Monai and Hadiza Monai, were rescued by a team of security agents comprising operatives of Puff Adder and a group of vigilante. He noted that the hoodlums escaped into the forest while the police have commenced an investigation into their attack on the village. We'll take another break here to bring you business stories. Don't go away. James. Eh? I don't know. You know the answer your call. Sorry. This. Hello? Is this Mr. Peter? I'm calling from the NCDC. Your friend, Mr. James Okripocha, was brought in this morning and tested positive for the coronavirus. He mentioned that he had been in close contact with God you. forbid bad thing. Sir, I am not saying that you have the virus, yeah. but you have spent some time with him over the past 14 days and... Um, it is Me. better if you self-isolate immediately. I don't know any James at all. Even the only, only James in the Bible that I know as a good Christian. Sir, he showed us pictures. Now, wow. If you have come in contact with someone who has tested positive for the coronavirus, self-isolating is key to protecting those around you. Remember, viruses don't move. People do. Stopping the spread is in your hands. This message is from the Akin Fadei Foundation in partnership with the National Orientation Agency with support from MacArthur Foundation. In the last three years, we have built a multi-purpose center, which is the envy of all in our constituency. And I can tell you that the people who are living there are already enjoying it. Guy, do you think what this man just said is true? 
See, I seriously doubt. I'm sure it's one of those that are silly lies. And wait up. Do you know there's a way to find out if these things he's saying is true or not? Ah. This is the construct app. It gives people like us a sure way to track implementation of constituency projects. It gives valid and verified information on location of projects, amounts allocated, amounts funded, the level of job done, and even the profiles of concerned legislators. You and I can post directly on this app. Are you serious? This is the go to app. If you want to know how our commonwealth is being expended by the government. Wow. Let's even see if what this man said is true. Show me. The Construct app is developed by other people in Nigeria with support from USAID and is available on both Google Play Store and Apple Store. Eh, that is true. <laughs> of course, I told you. Welcome back. We'll now join Annette Felix for News in Business. Thank you, Fidela. The dollar exchanged for 445 Naira in the parallel market on Monday due to scarcity and shrinking liquidity in the Forex market. Amin Ugwandabe, president of the Association of Brood Exchange Operators of Nigeria, explained that the extension of the ban placed on flights in the country by the federal government also affected the access to Forex by the Brood Exchange Operators. In the parallel market, a dollar is now sold at 445 naira from 425 naira. Guadabe added that the assurances of the CBN governor to foreign investors on ease of exit have helped to flatten the curve at 445 naira per dollar without any sign of further depreciation at the close of business today. The Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission has approved the reappointment of a 12-member dispute resolution panel for the Nigerian electricity supply industry. The commission says the appointment of the members was in line with market rules which empowers the NERC to constitute the panel and permits the appointment of members for a second term. In a statement issued in Abuja, the NERC said that the functions of the panel includes the arbitration and settlement of disputes between market participants in the Nigerian electricity market. It also outlined the participants in the country's power market to include the system operator, the market operator and other licensees engaged in the trading of electricity. We'll take a look at trading activities on the NSA today after this. The Nigerian stock exchange is off to a bearish run today with the Ultra Index recording losses of 1.06%. And that's to close at 23,695.90 basis points. The market cap here is closing uh, also lower at just over 12 trillion naira. Now here are equities are recording the most losses today topped by Dangote Cement. It's been selling at 150 naira per share since Thursday last week. But today Today we see that it's losing six naira and five cobble. And uh, moving on now, we see that MTN Nigeria uh, Communications PLC is losing as well, and that's by minus 0.36%. Also, uh, topping our list of percentage laggards, BUA Cement and Cavatoon Offshore Support Group PLC, recording losses of three and 27 cobble, respectively. On the other hand, we see that uh, CNI Leasing, support and logistics company, is recording its most gains in the last seven market days. It's an increase, as we can see here, of 6.25%. Uh, Eterna PLC from the oil and gas sector has also recorded bargain hunting activity, selling its shares today at 22 cobble higher than yesterday. Also, MPF Microfinance Bank, May and Baker uh, PLC are also making gains of 12 and 1 cobble respectively. Here's the market summary. 1.55, 155.746 million shares uh, worth 1.675 billion naira exchange hands in a total of 4,005 deals. 
And moving on now to our foreign scene, we see that after sleeping earlier today on lockdown, uncertainty and second wave fears, follow extension has lifted the FTSE 100 to 0.46% rise in the All Share Index. The Dow is also rising today, uh, gaining 125 points. Investors became optimistic that the economy would bounce back. The oil climbed as well, with WTI crude rising as much as 6.8%. But profit taking in the Tokyo Stock Exchange has also seen Nike shed off gains of previous sessions. And it's over to you now, Fidelia. Oh, thank you very much, Annette. And let's now move to the foreign scene. Isabel Dos Santos, the billionaire daughter of Angola's ex president, Jose Eduardo Dos Santos, has accused the government of using forgery to freeze her assets. Dos Santos and her Congolese husband, Sindika Dokolo, are accused of mismanaging and embezzling a billion dollars from Angolan state companies. Their assets in Angola and in Portugal were subsequently frozen. Dos Santos has now claimed that a copy of a fake passport bearing the signature of late martial art film star Bruce Lee was part of evidence submitted to a court that froze her assets. The 47-year-old tycoon, who was named by Forbes magazine as Africa's richest woman in 2013, uh, has denied any wrongdoing, saying she's a victim of a witch hunt. French women's soccer giant Lyon has been declared league champions for the 2019-2020 campaign, collecting the title for the 14th consecutive year after the season was ended by the coronavirus pandemic. Lyon won the past four women's champions league finals and have claimed the French title every year since 2007. The women's top flight in France was halted in mid-March when Lyon held a three-point lead over Paris Saint-Germain. Lyon and PSG will likely represent France next season in the Women's Champions League as both clubs made it through to the quarterfinals of this season's competition. And that's it on News Now. Many thanks for watching. Bye for now.